Welcome to Study Skills. I'm Mr. Owen with the Classical Academy. This is Essay Workshop 101. As always, I'm giving you a crash, shop, crash, crash course on everything you ever wanted to know about writing an essay, and I'm gonna do it in less than 18 minutes. Let's get cracking. I'm gonna talk fast. Remember, you can always pause and rewind. Pause and rewind. Pause and rewind. Let's go. All right, first things first, let's start with story time. Story time! Chris, can I get a cool graphic for story time? Boom, let's do this, story time. All right, what I'm gonna teach you today is the generics of essay writing, but if you ever have somebody with another red pen, what do I mean by that? So this may be lost in translation, but back in my day when a paper got graded, it was graded with a red pen, and you always feared the holder of the red pen. If I teach you something today that one day another teacher says, I don't want you to do that, you always listen to the teacher that has the red pen. You listen to the teacher that's doing the grading. My story is, when I was in college, and you'll get college professors that you love, that will change your life. You'll get some that are okay, and then you get some that flat out suck. And I had this one guy, and he was awful, terrible for professor. I think it was a political science class, and he would go off on all these weird tangents, and one day he went off on a tangent about the word that. He hated the word that, said it was the biggest waste of a word ever, and he decided that day, that he, if this 10 page paper we had to write for his class, which was like 90% of the grade, if you use the word that at any point in the paper, he was gonna give you an automatic F in the class. And I had to write this entire paper without using the word that. And I actually found that to be very difficult. However, I did it because he had the red pen. So if you learn something today and then you get another English teacher, another professor that says something different, always listen to who has the red pen. All right, let's go. Okay, so you'll see some cognitive skills throughout the summit and stuff that you do and throughout your learning. Things like argumentative claims, selection of evidence, explanation of evidence, integration of evidence, introduction, conclusion. These are all skills that you're gonna have to master while you're at classical academies and all of this stuff is all about essay writing, okay? Number one rule when you write an essay, if you've ever sat down to write your essay, always, always, always start with research, okay? Before you even sit down to type anything, make sure you've always done your research first, then that way you can sit down, you've got all of your information, you know about the topic, then you can do your writing, okay? Then the next most important thing after you've done your research is thesis. Today I'm gonna to teach you about two different types, okay? One's classification, it's super easy to use, works really well for English classes. Another one I'm gonna teach you to use is argumentative, works really well for science and history classes, okay? All right, next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna create an outline, which is super important to help keep you organized, okay? All right, so what do you do? You write an introduction, all right? Then you're going to use your outline to help you do the main body paragraphs and the conclusion, all right? Main body paragraphs, I'm not gonna get into a whole lot of detail on those, um, but you'll learn those as you go, all right? And of course, there's the dreaded works cited page, and I'll do a whole nother lesson on that to help you with, okay? All right, so eight steps to success. Start with an argumentative claim, okay? You're gonna research, outline, introduction, main body paragraph, conclusion, works cited page, read and revise. But Mr. Owen, you're talking too fast. Where do I start again? You start with your research, okay? The next is the thesis and the introduction, okay? And like I said, I'm gonna go over two types of thesis writing, okay? So this is thesis 101. The first sentence that you're going to write in your introductory paragraph after you've done your research is you are going to write a hook, okay? What is a hook? Think of like a fish hook, okay? Drawing the reader in to the paper. Okay, so you need something catchy, all right? The next thing that you are going to use is going to be context. And context is usually about two to four sentences. So you've got the hook, which is one sentence, and then the context, which is two to four sentences, okay? And the context is gonna explain the event, statement, or idea in terms that can be understood, okay? Always assume that whoever's reading your paper knows of the subject, but knows nothing of the topic. So if you're writing an essay about Lord of the Flies, you have to say that William Golding wrote Lord of the Flies. You have to give a synopsis about what Lord of the Flies is about. Now, you don't need to tell the entire story, but in a sentence or two, you need to explain that it's a story about a bunch of boys stranded on a deserted island and get into the details of what it's about. 
If you're writing a paper on history and you're talking about World War II, you don't have to go into every detail of World War II, but you have to say that in the 20th century, this was a war fought amongst world powers um, in Europe and Asia, and you have to get into a few details, okay? It's putting it in context. If you've ever seen Star Wars, right, and you see the scroll roll up before the movie starts, right, and you read all this stuff and then the movie starts, that's context. That's fast forwarding you to where it's gonna start. If you've ever watched Netflix and you read a summary about a show before you decided to watch it, that's putting that show in context. So you have to put your paper in context. So your first sentence is a hook, something catchy, and I'll show you some examples. Then you're gonna put it in context, explaining the event a little bit to the reader because they know of the subject but nothing of the topic. And then the thesis, and the thesis is so important. It is a blueprint for what your paper is about. Okay, super duper important. I can't tell you how many papers I've read. I've gotten to the end and I'm like, I have no idea what this is about. Okay, the thesis will help keep you organized. First one I'm gonna teach you is a classification essay. Okay, this is super easy and all you're gonna do is you're gonna sort your ideas into categories. All right, it's, it's useful because it's in categories. Um, it's, it's very organized and it's super easy to use. Okay, all right. So think of it like this. If you were at your desk, right, and you had a whole bunch of papers all over your desk, you might stack them in piles of importance, or you might stack them in piles of like, this is trash, this is a maybe save, this is something I need to read. You would divide them and organize them. It's the same kind of thing with a paper. All right, let's use this as an example, okay? Thesis statement of a classification essay. The thesis, sta the thesis statement usually includes the topic and how it is classified. Sometimes the categories are named. Okay, so for example, tourists in Hawaii can enjoy three water sports, snorkeling, surfing, and sailing. So that kind of question would be something like, what are some fun things to do in Hawaii? There you go, there's a thesis statement. Tourists in Hawaii can enjoy three water sports, snorkeling, surfing, and sailing. Then your main body paragraphs would be, one would be about snorkeling, one would be about surfing, and one would be about sailing. This is an effective way because it, it keeps you organized to what you're going to write about. And also when you get to college, instead of writing one paragraph about each one, you could write five pages about each one. And you can use this to really stretch things. Okay? Um, there's a lot of ways you can transition from this into your main body paragraphs. Uh, one of the most rudimentary ways is just to write firstly, secondly, third, and, and, and transition that way. Um, there's some more adult ways that you can transition. I'll show you a little bit later, but that's an example. Okay. Remember, the most important thing in a classification essay is to organize your thoughts. Okay. That's all you're doing. Okay. All right. Here's an example. Let's say we were talking about the most popular candy bar in America, and and the teacher said, "Your question is, what is the most popular candy bar? What are the most popular candy bars in America?" Here's an example for you of what a good introduction paragraph would look like. Here's my hook. Most Americans are guilty of having a sweet tooth. It's catchy, right? You go, oh, I do know people with a sweet tooth, or I have a sweet tooth. It's catchy, it brings you into the paper. Then, the candy industry in America is a $50 billion a year empire. One of the most popular candies is the candy bar. The candy bar is typically a rectangular piece of chocolate that is usually filled with various items. That's your context. Okay, I'm explaining it, and I made up the statistics, but for, for, for example's sake, it makes sense, right? I give you a little bit of information, and I explain what a candy bar is. Based on taste and ingredient, the three best candy bars in the United States are Twix, Milky Way, and Hershey's. That's it. Now, my first paragraph is going to be about Twix, and I'm going to talk about um, the, the taste and ingredients, and then I'm going to do Milky Way, I'm going to talk about taste and ingredients, and then I'm going to do Hershey's, and I'm going to talk about taste and ingredients. It's an easy way to organize your paper. Okay, and again, the hook draws in the reader, the context explains things, and the thesis gives you the blueprint, okay? And you can see how I've broken this down for you on this slide with my cute little Albert Einstein cartoon, and I literally show you exactly what I'm looking for and how it breaks down. And again, if I'm talking too fast, stop and rewind. Okay, all right, here's an example of a main body paragraph if that were still going on that essay. The Twix is one of the best candy bars in America because, according to Ainsley Bennington, renowned candy bar tester, the Twix is one of the most memorable aftertastes. The taste of candy bar is everything when it comes down to ranking the best. 
While the ingredients in the Twix aren't very unique, it's a blend of chocolate and caramel and a crunchy cookie. Some experts might argue that it's simply just a crunchy biscuit. However, the quality of the caramel and chocolate layers have, have elevated above others with similar ingredients. The sales of Twix in America tell the whole story. Last year, it was the top selling candy bar with over 1 billion sold. Now, I made up the statistics, but you get the idea, okay? I'm talking about taste, I'm talking about ingredients, which is what I talked about in my thesis, okay? Some great examples for you. You can rewind this video and pause and study these. I got it broken down for you. Now, if I were writing a conclusion, this is what it would look like. Okay, so let's say I wrote another paragraph about Milky Way, I wrote another paragraph about Hershey's. When you get to the conclusion, all you're redoing is restating your thesis and explaining your point, what are you trying to say? Okay, besides the importance of sales, taste and ingredient are what makes a candy bar great. The three in the United States that show best why those are important and why they are the best are Twix, Milky Way, and Hershey's. Some may disagree and claim that price and texture are bigger factors. However, the ingredients are what make up the texture and sometimes good things are worth the extra price. The billion dollar empire will continue to thrive because of these three top delicious candy bars and America's sweet tooth will continue to remain intact. And you remember I talked about the sweet tooth in my first sentence. Here I've tied it back into my last sentence and I've completely wrapped this thing up with a nice bow. I mentioned again all three of the candy bars I'm talking about and taste and ingredients. That's all you have to do. So don't get overwhelmed when you write an essay. Do your research, become an expert on the topic, okay? Then organize your thoughts with a nice classification essay, and then you're gonna write your paragraphs, and then when you get to the conclusion, all you're doing is summing up everything, okay? Another type of essay, which is a little bit more complicated, okay, so if you need to pause this and take a breath and get a glass of water, get up and run around your house, do whatever you gotta do, make it happen, okay? Because this is another type. This is a little bit more advanced, really works well for history, uh, any argumentative essays, and I'm gonna give you a math formula. So for you people that maybe struggle with English a little bit, this is a math formula, and it's X, however, A, B, C, therefore, Y. Or, <clears throat> if you're like, I'm great at English, Mr. Owen, please do not give me a math formula. I got you, okay? It's counterpoint, three reasons for your argument, and your argument, okay? And that's it. Counterpoint is the opposite of your opinion, okay? If you're arguing something, there has to be another side to the argument. Okay, so if you were arguing for abortion and you were saying well, uh, abortion should be legal or you were arguing that it shouldn't be legal, there's an opposite to that. If you are for it being legal, there's an opposite that it should be illegal or vice versa. If you were are arguing for the legalization of marijuana, the opposite would be that it would be illegal. So in an argument in an essay, there's always gotta be another side. And so a counterpoint would be the opposite of your opinion. Okay, here's how it would look. So here's an adult AP level question. Okay. In the period 1850 to 2001, new technologies emerged that had, scientific, that had significant social, political, and economic effects. Develop an argument that evaluates the extent to which changes in the spread of ideas, information before and after World War I impacted societies. I know. That's the kind of questions you're going to get when you go to college, though. Okay? These are adult, high-end, high-level questions. Okay, How did I break that down? Pretty easy. Okay? I'm going to start with the why, okay, which is my argument. I'm going to say, therefore, changes in the spread of information before and after World War I have greatly impacted societies. Okay, that's my argument. And then if you look at my X, which is the counterpoint, changes in the spread of information did not impact societies. Okay? That's my argument is that it did impact societies. The argument against that would be that it did not. Okay? My three reasons that Changes in the spread of information before and after one greatly impacted societies. I'm going to talk about steam power, okay? And I'm going to use locomotives and steamboats, which is political. I'm going to talk about gas power, which is cars and trucks, which is economic. And then I'm going to talk about battery power, which is cell phones and social, okay? And I know this may be a little crazy for you, but go back, watch this again. It's really not. I'm breaking this down like a math formula. It's super easy, okay? Here's what this would look like. Okay, this is my thesis. This is like college level argumentative essay thesis. Some historians might argue that in the period 1850 to 2001, new technologies did not spread information and impact societies because the Columbian Exchange had already globalized the world. However, many new technologies emerged during this period that had significant political, economic, and social effects. 
Steam power led to locomotives and steamboats, which made the exchange of goods and ideas easier and led to the growth of many empires. Gas power gave way to the automobile and made the travel of people and ideas more convenient. Battery power also led to cell phones, which have connected the world socially like never before. Therefore, changes in the spread of information before and after World War I have greatly impacted societies. Now, just like the classification essay, I have organized my thoughts into the paragraphs. My A, B, and C that I showed you on the previous slide are what each of my paragraphs are going to be about. And like I said, when you go to college, usually in high school they have you write five paragraph essays. When you go to college, you're going to write 10, 15, 20 page papers. So all you do is that A, B, and C, one's five pages, next one's five pages, and the next one's five pages. So you can stretch all those with more information. Okay, and again, I said paragraph one would be about the steam power and the locomotive and the steamboats. I could use examples about England and various things like that. Okay, same thing with paragraph two. My B would be gas power, and I would talk about the automobile, and I could use the German Autobahn as an example. Okay, and my paragraph C would be number C, and I would talk about battery power and cell phones, and I would maybe talk about a historical event like the Arab Spring, where through social media they had a whole bunch of uprisings in Egypt and other countries. Okay? In adult level writing, when you get to college, they're not going to want you to do every paragraph like first, second, third. It works in high school, it works like freshman, sophomore year, but eventually you want to move on to more natural and more adult transitions. Why? Well, when you write a 20 page paper, you can't be like fifthly, 85thly, when you get to like your 10th page paragraph, you can't be like, and my 77th point is, that doesn't work. So you can use words like in addition to, likewise, furthermore, therefore, or you can naturally connect the previous sentence to the last one. So if I was talking about Twix and I was saying Twix is a wonderfully tasty candy bar. I could say another tasty candy bar is the Milky Way, and that could transition me to another paragraph, okay? That's the way you do natural transitions, okay? So I know that was a lot. I know I talked fast. I know I covered a ton, okay? But remember, the most important thing is that you start with research. Do not even start typing before you have all of your knowledge in here, okay? It'll make it much easier. From there, Write your thesis. Work on your introduction paragraph. You're going to want to spend the most amount of time on that and getting that really killer. Then from there, you've already done your research. Now it's organized. And whether you're using a classification style essay, which is super easy to use, all you're doing is organizing some things in your brain. Okay. Remember the Hawaii example. It's super easy to remember. Tourism in Hawaii is fun with examples like snorkeling, surfing, and sailing. And then you just write the paragraphs about that. Okay. Transition naturally. And if you want to use the argumentative essay, I know that was a very dull level, but I can promise you if you're going to take AP at our school, they'll be going over that in much more detail. But that is a way that you can use math formulas to really bring up the level of your actual paper, okay? So remember, if I was the red pen guy, remember my red pen story. If you ever run into a teacher that tells you something different, do it. Whoever's grading your stuff, do what they say. If you were in my class, I would tell you in the last paragraph to never say in conclusion because it drives me crazy. It's a science thing, and I think it's lazy writing. So if you were in my class, it's no in conclusion, okay? Restate your thesis in your own words in your conclusion and sum up your point of what you're trying to say. And that's all you have to do on an essay. And we are right at 18 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. That's all the time I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this. If you need any more help, go see your English teacher. Ask them about some of the questions that you might have. Keep practicing. You'll have this done in no time. Remember, my eight steps, you can go back and look at those. And one other last piece of advice is, when you're done writing your essay, make sure you save time to do your works cited page. I always recommend doing that, not at the same time, because you're going to be tired, you're going to be exhausted, you don't want to have to then also do the works cited page, which is a complete pain in your booty. So trust me, do that another time. Uh, go eat lunch, come back and finish it up, so don't wait till the last minute to do your essays. I hope you enjoyed this essay workshop. You guys have a great rest of your day.